Welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to continue our discussion on, on classical open systems and in emergent stochastic behavior out of a Hamiltonian system. So, in the previous lectures, we were able to uh, derive, starting from an underlying Hamiltonian system, an equation of motion for particle with position x and possibly momentum p coupled to an external potential but also coupled to a bath. And we consider a bath, a bath made of harmonic oscillators. And after integrating out the dynamics of the bath and assuming the typical frequency density of a spectral density of all the oscillators for the characteristic frequencies of the oscillator in the, in, the, in the bath to be gapped, to be significantly larger than the typical frequencies of the dynamics of the system, that's T be a characteristic time scale for the dynamics of the system, 1 over T is a small frequency, meaning the system behaves as a slow particle compared to the typical time at which you oscillate oscillators in the bath oscillate, then uh, many simplification occur, and the underlying Hamilton's equations not only can be solved exactly, this is a consequence for the bath, this is a consequence of their linearity, but also the resulting equation of motion for the system can be phrased in the following very convenient way, p dot equal negative, I'm not using the gradient and using the partial derivative here, symbol, but it's just a notation symbol, and so this is called the Langevin equation, and the Langevin equation contains a viscosity term, a dissipative term, and a stochastic force. And remember, this equation was valid in the limit in which the oscillations in the bath were taking place so fast that basically you would immediately lose memory of the interaction with the particle. The effect of the bath was supposed to be delta correlated and the resulting stochastic force was supposed to be Gaussian with zero average. But in addition to that, we could formally derive, or we sketch the derivation to be honest, on what is called the fluctuation dissipation theorem. Now, if you discretize this delta function in some ways, you allow the time intervals to be smeared and finite, well, this becomes an equation for the variance of the stochastic force as long as you assume it's Gaussian. So the dynamics goes under the effect of kicks from the environment which provide a system with energy and violate the conservation of energy, but also dissipative forces which takes away energy from the system. And one of the purposes of the lectures to come will be to show that indeed this specific uh, relationship here, which follows from integrating over the Gaussian initial condi uh, the Boltzmann initial conditions for the marginalizing with respect to the unknown initial conditions of the bath. This theorem, this relationship between fluctuations and dissipation, will be sufficient to ensure that the system will attain thermal equilibrium. Meaning that if you start with a particle which has a velocity and a configuration that is very far from what would be sort of a large probability situation for a Boltzmann equilibrium situation for a particle in this environment, with time it will evolve towards the right initial condition. So, stated differently, now in phase space this dynamics is no longer, uh, is no longer uh, deterministic, now I have a restricted phase space for a particle only. Remember, my Dynamics is deterministic for the extended system of particle and bath. There, if I knew exactly the position of my all my bath 
harmonic oscillators and their initial velocity and the position initial velocity of the particle, I would in principle be able to determine a unique uh, trajectory in phase space. What I'm plotting here is the reduced phase space for the particle only. And now any kind of determinism is lost because the dynamics is completely stochastic. So just in the Liouvillian case, I can define an initial probability distribution, let me call it px t naught, and let me call it rho naught. And if I sample points in the phase space according to the distribution, so most of them will be in the region here, where the probability is large, but if this is a smooth function, occasionally I will have tails, and I will evolve in time this, I will generate an evolution of this distribution, which is not an evolution, it's no longer a Uvillian evolution anymore. It would be a different evolution because subject to different equations of motion for the probability density. And how do I sample this distribution? Well, we'll see later on that there is a specific PDE that would be obeyed by the density probability distribution, but for a moment you imagine to pick up one of these initial conditions and solve in stochastic equations of motion for a given time for each of these points. And you imagine repeating this over and over and over, and then you apply a frequentistic, uh, um, a frequentistic uh, definition of probability density, and the result will be the probability density p of x at time t given the initial p of x at time t naught. So basically, by integrating the Langevin equations in time and then constructing an histogram of the results after time t of a very large number of trajectories sampled from the initial configuration p on all of x, we will be able to generate a new distribution p of t so we are in practice doing what the Liouville's equation was supposed to do, evolve forward in time by initial distribution. But remember, the Liouville's equation suffered from a problem that we did not know the initial conditions for all the particles in the system. In the present stochastic Langevin dynamics formulation, we don't care about the initial condition of path because the initial conditions of the path and the lack of knowledge of the Earth is implicitly accounted for through the fluctuation dissipation theorem and through the presence of random and dissipative forces in my differential equations. Okay, so the question now naturally arises is there are many questions that can be, uh, can be posed. First of all, what is the partial differential equation for oh, my, my screen is frozen I expect for P of X and T so basically what's on the right hand side of this and can we that's the, that's the first question and then in complete analogy with the same question we had in quantum mechanics can you reduce the problem of solving this partial differential equation which I will write in the following sense with a, with, a, with a given operator here on the right hand side which I will specify later and the question that I will pose is can we solve it can we reduce it to quadrature. So in other words, can we write p of x of t in terms of a path integral over some distribution? So now you begin to see why we began this course, this part of the course, by studying the quantum problem, even if our focus was not necessarily solving the Schrodinger equation in one dimension, the idea of reducing a PDE uh, to quadrature is far more general than is quantum mechanics. 
it can be applied even in a classical system where you are in the presence of a marginalization of an initial condition leading to stochastic behavior. And then this is a, a big a big chapter in modern statistical mechanics and it leads to several numerical and conceptual implications and we'll go through some of them. But before we go into that, uh, we want to explore this connection with, um, with the Langevin, between the Langevin dynamics and the and the quantum mechanics a little bit further which will lead us to discovering interesting implications. So let's um, let's look at this. So we have our Schrodinger equation, uh, Fokker-Planck equation, which I now rewrite again in the following sense. And now let me, and there's of course a master here. And let me go to Fourier space once again. I will have a negative square. I will have the Fourier transformation of this term, which I don't care for the moment. And I will have uh, perhaps a i omega m gamma is still the plus. The Fourier transform of this function, since this is a function with delta correlation, this Fourier transform is, is a, a simple commutation relationship, a simple correlation functions, but I'm, I'm not interested in that. All I'm trying to say is that as long as my dynamics scale omega is a slow dynamic scale, my the characteristic frequency of the modes of the system are small scales, are infrared scale, still in the context of renormalization group theory framework, then I can construct a ratio between this and this. And this. I'm interested in the limit in which This condition is realized, and if you look at that, that means that a characteristic time scales at which the dynamics of a system takes place is much slower than the typical collision rate for the harmonic oscillator in the path. Uh, and whenever this happens, then this term, the inertial term in the Schrodinger equation, is actually redundant. And uh, uh, sorry, the inertial term in, in, in the Langevin equation is redundant because it's a small scale and can be neglected. The result is a new equation that now is overdumped and it's a first order differential equation. After rescaling by the appropriate units of mass, which I always forget and stand here. Okay. This new equation becomes neglecting the acceleration term in the Langevin equation. We arrive to the following concept, the following equation, the overdumped Langevin equation. where d is the diffusion coefficient is defined in the following way and basically has a physical interpretation of a scale with the units of a square distance of, over time to measure how fast the system can diffuse in the system under the effect of the random force. So basically how quick the system explores the configuration space because of the random walk. Eta here is nothing but psi divided by m. And basically uh, m gamma. And it's basically every scale stochastic noise. So basically, in order to understand the correlation of the function, for eta, all you have to do is to take the correlation function for psi and divide by the scale. The result is the following 
expression. Let me erase this. Okay, so the fluctuation of the stochastic force is directly related to the this participation induced by the presence of the path. So this is often viewed as a uh, yet another fluctuation dissipation. Uh, some comments are in order on this equation. Uh, in the next uh, part of this lecture, we will focus on some mathematical aspects associated with this equation. But let me begin by saying that this is now a first-order equation for motion, and it conserves the motion in configuration space. So unlike in the under damp case of the Langevin equation, where it has both position and momentum, and therefore I can use the Langevin equation to sample distribution in phase space. By this equation, I can only sample distribution in configuration space. So basically, I sample configuration from a Gibbs distribution. For instance, I can sorry, have some initial distribution rho naught of x. And if I evolve in time this distribution, I will get a configuration Px. Just as in the case of the phase space distribution, obtained by stochastic dynamics, which uh, sort of uh, extends the concept of the Villian's evolutions to open system, uh, we will be interested to understanding the dynamics of the configuration space distribution. But this is a problem that I will, and in particular to understanding the diffusion, the partial differential equation that this distribution is available. We will defer this question uh, to the next lecture. Today we will sort of dig further into the mathematical aspects of the logic. equation. In the overdone plane.